What's going on everybody? I'm Dylan. I run Quest for Nostalgia and I teach how I make my 3D printed props. In this video I'm going to teach how I made this Master Chief commission and I love the way that this helmet came out. I'm super excited to teach you guys how to do this thing. Before we get into it I want to thank my Patreons Beaver, Vin, Balance. Thank you so much for supporting me. It really helps if you guys also want to monetary sponsor the channel here and help me do these projects and whatnot. Uh, Patreon.com slash Quest for Nostalgia. And if you just want to support regularly, like, comment, subscribe, the YouTube things that really helps these videos get out there and it helps me grow. And that is so, so helpful. So thank you. Thank you so much if you guys do decide to support the channel. So let's get into how I made this helmet. This is the free Thingiverse file. I'll have the link in the description below. It comes in a million pieces. It can be printed on really small printers. And so I'm gonna show you exactly all the steps you need to do to come out with a helmet that looks this cool. All right, so like I said, it comes in a bunch of pieces and I could have combined those in software and printed them in bigger sections, but I actually used this time to finish up some of my smaller rolls and, and print it in a bunch of different colors and things like that just to kind of finish some, some rolls off. And so I did print it in all the small pieces. When you're going to assemble, you want to plan all these out. You don't want to just kind of like start going around in these different pieces and whatnot. You need to kind of do it in sections. So I map out how I'm going to put the pieces together. This file is really cool because it has alignment slots in there. So I actually just use some like bamboo kebab skewers that I got from the dollar store, cut them into tiny pieces, and that goes into tiny holes to help me align the helmet. When you're printing multiple pieces and things like that, something that has to meet edge to edge, sand them grab a sheet of 80 and then sand the edges so that way you can make them nice and flush this helmet is a perfect helmet to learn how to weld uh using a soldering iron on this thing uh, i will be doing a tutorial exactly on how to weld in more in depth than what i'm going to do in here but yeah this video has those alignment tabs and a lot of extra plastic which is really nice to be able to melt down and give you really strong attachment points so welding with this thing was a, a dream it was so nice to be able to go through weld the lines uh fold over the plastic on top of each other and really have strong connections so I broke it up into different sections, did it by quarter panels, the kind of top of the dome and quarter panels, the bottom sides, uh, front brim, mouth, and did all these kind of small sections. And then I attached it from side, side, and then down that center strip, leaving the front brim and the visor off it and did those last. And then you have a fully completed Master Chief helmet and it looks pretty sweet. So now we can get into finishing the helmet. So. I started by doing 80 grit as I always do. 80 grit is a really good way to start knocking down the layer lines of PLA. All of this had to be hand sanded. You really couldn't use the orbital sander uh, with this project because there's so many nooks and crannies in this, so many tight grooves. So I used a lot of just hand sanding just with the regular paper. And then also some, I made my own little files, a popsicle stick and some 80 grit on that as well and used that to get into those tight spaces. If you've watched my other videos, you know that in my Black Ranger helmet and my Landalorian helmet, I used UV resin and this project I did as well. I've stepped away from doing UV resin. I don't know if it's really worth the risk of the toxicity and it doesn't really do that much more to warrant the you know extra step there. But here's what I did anyways. I have my UV resin supplies. I, I use a little crappy brush from the dollar store, UV resin, and then I have a curing light as well. And so all you have to do is paint it on in small sections. So I poured it into a little bit of a cup, used that crappy brush and painted it in small quarter panels at a time. And then I used that light to cure for about 30 seconds to a minute each section there as I moved on across the helmet, not trying to do it all at once. After that was all cured, I used 120 grit to sand and knock those layers down a little bit more, you know, and kind of utilizing that UV resin that filled in some of those low spots. Once it was all sanded to 120, then I used Rust-Oleum filler primer because it's gray. Uh, you could also get the Duplicolor filler primer in gray, but I had Rust-Oleum on hand. I used the gray filler primer because I knew I was going to be using Bondo glazing putty afterwards and Bondo glazing putty going through it and kind of doing the small holes to see if there's any other layer lines that needed to be covered up using that putty. After I put all the Bondo in the spots, I then sanded it with 220. After that round of 220, I then hit it with the Duplicolor filler primer that has that same red color as the uh, Bondo does. In this helmet, I actually did a few steps a few times. And so I actually, after that filler primer, I sanded to 220 again. I then sprayed it with a flat gray primer and I actually would say skip this step 
Uh, the gray primer did not sand well unless you wet sand next instead. Uh, I then went into sanding 320 but did not like how it was sanding. So then I filler primed it again afterwards and then I sanded from the filler primer with 320 grit. After the helmet was all nice and smooth, you know, with so many layers of filler and the UV resin and really giving it a lot of sanding layers there, uh, it was time to paint satin black. And I used that to paint things like the details here on the side, Cortana's spot, uh, the visor, inside of the lights there, all those little accent pieces. I always let those cure for about a day and then I mask them off uh, because Rust-Oleum takes a long time to cure and I don't want to mask too early on and risk pulling that paint up. So with the black masked off, then I went ahead and painted the matte green. Clearly you can do any variations of the Master Chief helmet that you want. It doesn't have to necessarily be Master Chief. It can be anything like your custom character on the Halo games. So after that was done being sprayed, I wanted to weather it a little bit. So I actually distressed it by taking black acrylic paint, watering it down and brushing that on and then wiping off the excess so that it left black in kind of the nooks and crannies and kind of got into some shadows and, and shaded the helmet a little bit. And once you're done all the distressing, you can add browns and different things like that. Do as much or as little as you want to. You can add chipping and, and metal, you know, use a little bit of silver and touch the edges and, and chip it up however far you want to go with distressing. After that, it's time to clear coat. So I clear coated it with a satin clear coat instead of the high gloss that I usually do. And we're ready for the final part, that visor. So I made a paper template as usual. I cut it out of a, a face shield. I put the link in the description below on the face shields that I was using and got gold window tint and matched it up and did the normal process. Every time I would go to put that visor into the helmet though, it would bubble up, it would kind of wrinkle and it was really being a pain. So I tried a second technique. I cut that window tint in the same shape as the template and I ran it through a laminator to give it a little bit more, you know, shape to it and, and have a little bit more texture and strength rather than just a sheet of tint and i tried that and that wrinkled really bad when it was put on to the visor as well so i didn't know what i was going to do well then i looked back at my original visor that i made on the face shield and i guess after letting it sit for a day or two the glue had really strengthened up and so then it stopped doing the bubbling as it was bent so with this tint this gold tint I did it again, I put it on the face shield and I let it cure for like two days so that way the glue was really nice and strong and when I went to bend it into the helmet, there was no more bubbles anymore, it came out perfect. And then I just hot glued it in as normal. And there we go, we have the finished helmet here and like I said, the visor came out so good on that third try. You know, third time's the charm, whatever. Uh, you know, it does take a lot of work to go through and get this helmet, you know, sanded because there's so many tight spaces and whatnot in here, getting rid of the seam lines. Some of the lines work well with it because of, you know, the geometry of the helmet. But yeah, I love the way this helmet came out. Uh, it's a gift and a curse that it's a commission. Like, thanks so much for asking me to do commissions and I'm super happy to make these things, but I'll never do this helmet again. And it's sad because this now has to leave my collection. I'm actually shipping this out today. So very excited to get this to you. I'm excited that you get this sweet, sweet helmet. Uh, but it would look so amazing to have that on the shelf with my ODST. So yeah, enjoy this, you know, very sad to see this thing go. I hope you guys like the way that this thing came out. Let me know in the comments below, what are projects that you would love to see? What are some of your dream helmets or dream props that you really would like? Uh, I always like to hear that. Um, what Halo games did you play? What's the most memorable to you? I started on Halo 2, uh, but gosh, I have so many memories of doing Halo 2 LAN parties, and then Halo 3 clearly was amazing. Playing in Forge and whatnot. Oh my gosh, so many memories of doing that. Going for the recon armor. Halo DST clearly is, you know, my favorite of the Halo series. It's just such a weird one-off that I just absolutely love it. But yeah, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. You know, you can come message on Instagram, uh, join the Discord, different things like that. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe, all those things really help me grow. And we have Patreon, Amazon, Wishlist, all these things. There's so many ways that you can help support and do whatever you'd like to do to help support the channel if you want to. Uh, it all helps out so, so much. And I appreciate all of you. If you've made it this far, you are the backbone of the channel. I say that all the time, but watch time really, really helps. And so thank you for making it to the end of the video. I, I really appreciate that. I've got so many cool projects lined up. I finished like three or four projects all at the same time. So I have so much content to share with you guys and I'm excited to get that out. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you guys. Peace.